Hey guys, welcome to this video where I'll be starting teardown on this AX4S transmission out of a 2002 Ford Taurus. This transmission failed due to a leak at the cooler where engine coolant entered the system. I had already got it part way apart before deciding I would record, so this will be fairly quick. This video will cover removing external parts before opening the covers. The first part I'm going to remove is going to be this cover plate on the right side of the transmission, held on by these two 8mm bolts. Next I'm going to remove this 8mm bolt and the cover for the output shaft speed sensor, as well as the sensor itself. Pull upward on the sensor while twisting to remove it, and leave it resting on its hull for a moment. Next, we're going to remove an 8mm bolt right here, and that's going to be holding in your dipstick and fill tube. It's kind of difficult to remove because it's sealed very tightly, but if you pull up while twisting, it'll eventually come out. As you can see here, the sensor connector is clipped to the tube's bracket. I plan to leave it attached to avoid the risk of breaking the clip, but you can remove it if you want to. Next, we're going to remove the 13mm nut that holds the control lever to the range sensor and shaft. Now we'll remove the lever itself. And with that out of the way, along with the two 8mm bolts that hold it in place, we can then remove the range sensor. All you have to do to remove the range sensor is pull it straight up. It might take some force. If you have to, you can use a screwdriver and pry it off. Uh, just try to get as close to the shaft as you can while prying, otherwise you can start causing damage to it by uh, damaging the plastic. Now I'm going to remove this bracket, it's held on by two 13mm bolts and one 13mm nut. Turning our attention to the rear of the transmission as it would sit in the vehicle, we're going to remove these two servos. The one in the upper left is going to be the overdrive servo held in by three bolts, and the one in the lower right is going to be the low intermediate servo also held in by three bolts. When you remove these, you want to be careful to hold uh, pressure on them because they are spring-loaded and can eject and end up shooting the spring out and then you have problems trying to figure out where in the world the spring went. It may even be a good idea while removing these to loosen the bolts part way and then walk the uh, cover back slightly. That way, when you remove the bolts fully, you don't end up having the full load of the spring pushing against you. It's just going to be a partial load of it, and it won't potentially damage the threads on your last bolt and uh, in the transmission while by uh, shooting out suddenly. Note that the low intermediate servo cover has a gasket. I'm going to be keeping the gasket with the cover so that once I have all my replacement parts and I'm ready to reassemble the transmission, I'll know exactly what the gasket looks like that I need for it. Moving over to the left side of the transmission, we're going to remove this 8mm bolt which holds on the turbine shaft speed sensor. 
removing the sensor, all you have to do is pull out and twist again, and it'll pop right out. Now with that removed, you're also going to have to remove a metal clad seal that I've already removed. It'll be right here at the output shaft, as well as one on the opposite side, and one by the input shaft. There's also going to be this circlip on this side that you're going to have to pull off. All you really need is maybe a screwdriver and a pair of lock ring pliers, snap ring pliers, sorry. Next we're going to come back to the right side of the transmission inside of the bell housing and we'll remove the four 8mm bolts that are marked with red, as well as the five 10mm bolts marked with yellow. For the moment, we're going to be leaving the torx-headed bolts that are uh, around the input shaft. Those are, do not need to be removed yet. This is effectively the last step of this video. Next time the transmission will need to be turned on its side so that the bell housing is facing the ground. You'll need access to both the left and bottom pans so that you can remove them and remove parts from their areas. Thanks for watching and I hope you'll join me in the next one.